Hello, today we will discuss how to properly compound sterile compounds using USP 797 guidelines for aseptic technique. There are multiple steps to follow when going to compound a sterile product. Practicing the proper technique can allow for compounded preparations to be made properly without contamination. The ASP USP 797 guidelines are able to assist compounding personnel in making sterile compounded preparations of high quality and reduce harm to not only the patient but to the compounded personnel as well. All sterile preparations must be made in a sterile environment, including an anti-room and buffer room. In the buffer area, we will have proper space for storage and supplies for compounding and our laminar flow hoods. Hello, here we are in our ISO Class 8 anti-room. We have our sink that we'll be washing our hands. Our garbing area here where we have our garbing materials and our demarcation line. Here, I'm going to start gowning. We will start with our shoe covers. And I'm working from my shoes and then up to my face. And then I actually want all my hair back. I'm not wearing any jewelry, any makeup. Those are not allowed per guidelines. And I want to make sure all my hair is covered. And then gentlemen, if you do have a beard, they do make beard masks for you or we can just use a regular face mask. After this point, I'm ready to wash my hands. Hello, we're at the hand washing station. I'd like to properly go through how to properly wash your hands uh, for getting them ready for aseptic technique. This is pretty important. Usually your sink will have a foot or knee trigger for the water. So here we have a foot. Go ahead and trigger the water. And I'm gonna wash all the way up to my elbows. So I'm gonna get them wet. And you need a prop, proper antibiotic soap, antimicrobial soap. And we'll be washing all the way up to our elbows, around your wrist. Make sure you get in under the fingernails, in between the fingers. And on top of the hand as well. And you'll be doing this for about 30 seconds. It's about saying the ABCs twice. And then you'll go ahead and rinse. And then to dry, you'll use a lint-free paper towel. Some facilities have electric hand dryers. And after you dry, you will use an agent with alcohol. Once that's soaked in, you're ready to continue your garbing. Okay, after we've washed our hands, now we can continue garbing. Here, we're going to go ahead by the demarcation line. We're going to go ahead and gown. Depending on your facility, you might have a different gown material. This one's good if we're using hazardous materials because it's plastic. But we can use it for normal cross, or compounding as well. Now I'm ready for my gloves.
And the final step after gloving, before I go into my buffer room, is I need one last application of sanitizer for my hands. Now let's go compound. Hello, now we're at our laminar flow hood. We're getting ready to prepare our products. Before we can do so, uh, we need to talk about cleaning. Here I do have a non-hazardous hood where the airflow is horizontal. You can see the HEPA filter is on the back and the airflow is coming horizontally towards me. In your hazardous flow hoods, uh, you will see a vertical HEPA filter. It will be coming from the ceiling and flow vertically down. So we can keep that in mind when we talk about hazardous techniques. To begin with cleaning, uh, we need to make sure that we're cleaning before each shift occurs. If you have ongoing batches, like sometimes in the hospital we're batching constantly, we need to make sure that we're cleaning at least every 30 minutes. And also if we spill something or something becomes contaminated on our surface, we need to go ahead and re-clean our hood at that time. For cleaning, you'll need a couple products. You'll need some sterile water, isopropyl alcohol 70%, and again, your lint-free paper towels or 4x4 gauze will work in this uh, for this purpose. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and start with the sterile water. We're just going to do this to clean any dried medication or anything left over um, from the night before or from the previous shift. So we'll go ahead and soak our towel in sterile water. And then I'm just going over just the surface here to remove any dry materials. Now the real technique comes when we're using our alcohol. There is a technique to this and it's to work from, we're going to work from the farthest point on our surface to us and then top to bottom. So also when we use the alcohol, we want to spray into the cloth, not onto the surface. And definitely don't ever spray into the HEPA filter. So like I said, we'll be working from the back corner and I'm coming near me. So back to near and I'm moving from top and I'm moving down. This is a new technique for the guidelines. So this is how we're doing at this point. I will do the same with the other side. And I'll move back to here, top to bottom. Don't forget about the ceiling. Again, back to near. And you can go left to right, right to left, whatever your preference. Just making sure we're overlapping and covering the whole surface upon each wipe. And lastly, and most importantly, is our surface that we'll be working on. After this, you want to do the bar as well. So we'll go ahead and do that at this time. We can just wipe our hooks as well. Now your hood is ready to be used for sterile compounding.